to being a non-EU student to an European student. And then also the payments and the tuition fees uh, will, for the next year, be on the European student. So not for the first year, but for the second year. Thank you. You're welcome, Stephanie. Yes, I got a little confused with uh, the explanation that you did that uh, for the 1st July and the deadline is 15 July. That was for a non-EU student or EU student? Uh, it's for non-EU students uh, because of the visa application. So we uh, firstly but That's said, not possible, right? Sorry? But the visa application is not possible, right? Until October or because yeah, we're coming in the month. From which nationality uh, are you? India. India, yeah, then it's not possible for, for you and for us to apply for your visa at this moment. Um, but there are some countries that are allowed also outside of the EU that start the on site program uh, in the Netherlands. And for those students, we can apply for visa. But okay, okay, so we cannot do it yet for, for you. But you will be informed as soon as it will be possible. All right, so that's like uh, depending on uh, the gov government uh, opening the border for the third countries. Yes, you are correct, yeah. All right, okay, okay. thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Professor. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, my last one who raised uh, the hand, so if you, Want to ask your question? You can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm from Vietnam, so I am the Europe student, and I just finished my first year at Saxion, so that means I have been registered from the academic year 2019 and 2020, and. Uh, I found the information about the SES that it will be changed next year from 2,500 uh, 2, to 3,300. Uh, but it's also say that it's just for the student who have been registered in the year 2018 to 2019. So I, I don't know if my case will be also considered because uh, I also found that my study is also affected by the corona situation more or less. So can you please clarify for me about it? Um, unfortunately, I did not get the question uh, due to maybe problems with the connection. Just I only heard half of your, uh, half of your question. Can you maybe summarize uh, the question that you have? Um, Sven? Yeah. There's a session actually for students who are already studying here at Saxion, and this session is actually meant for those who are coming here for the first time. So there is, she's asking about the Saxion Excellence Scholarship, uh, but I think it's best if you send an email to the international office about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we don't have that information uh, organized for this session. This moment. Okay. Okay, thank you. You All right, thank you. Well, my dude. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we switch to the next topic? Sure. All right. Uh, next topic will be insurance. Um, well, for those who are new here uh, and are probably coming to the Netherlands, um, Please know that the, that the Netherlands is known for their good medical healthcare uh, system. Um, but you also need to know that you have, must have a health and liability insurance at all times in the Netherlands. Uh, you love to be insured for everything, but these two items are important to have here in the Netherlands. For Europeans, they mostly have already an insurance from their home country, um, <clears throat> which is called the so-called European Health Card. Uh, Please make sure that this um, health card uh, uh, covers your medical um, 
issues here in the Netherlands occasionally needed. Uh, sometimes we have European students here who are not yet fully known how they are covered and for which things they are covered because the medical um, healthcare here is, is quite expensive if compared to other countries. And so uh, it is good to know for which things you are covered, like also if you go to visit a family doctor, which is a standard procedure here in the Netherlands, which is not always common in your home country probably. So make sure you check with your insurance provider uh, for which things you are covered and for which period. Are you covered for the full study program or only for like the first year? And how do your claim procedure works? Because that's sometimes what we hear from students that they're not fully aware of when they come here. Uh, Non-European students, we take care of your uh, insurance um, yeah, uh, with, uh, by cooperating with the A1 insurance company. So for the first academic year, we take care of your health and liability insurance. Um, just know, and this, can, this is for European students and for non-European students, in case that you find a part-time job, you must switch to a so-called uh, Dutch basic health care insurance, Basel Zorgverzekering. For that, I can explain you a lot, but maybe that's best maybe at the time that you're here and you find a part-time job. Um, but that needs, you need to be aware of. In other cases, you need to have this private insurance. And for the non-European, we arrange that for you. And for the European, students, we expect you to have arranged that for your own country. Are there any questions, perhaps, about the insurance or medical care? Um, Samantha, I see here. Let me see if I can get her. Samantha, can you can you use the microphone? Hello. Hi. Hi, sorry. Um, so coming from Switzerland, how does it work? Because I'm not sure I have this European healthcare. Okay, I just well, have you, a you, Swiss. You have a Swiss uh, healthcare ins insurance? Yes. Yeah. So normally what you have is like a card that you can uh, use. If we show here at the, um, um, at, at the hospitals or with the family doctor. So check with your insurance company if you are also covered for your stay here in Netherlands during your, during your study. But I guess I guess your your yours will be will be uh, sufficient. To check with your with your insurance company if it's uh, if it's indeed also covering your medical care here in the Netherlands. Okay, and uh, may I ask how much does the healthcare cost in the Netherlands? Well, depending a bit, but um, what the procedure normally is, is if you, if you uh, like for standard things, you first go here to a family doctor, and that um, family doctor here uh, <coughs> costs about uh, 28 um, euros for a visit, which is normally covered by the insurance. However, uh, I'm not sure if it's also covered by your insurance, because it's not something standard in other countries to have a family doctor. It's mm -hmm. here it's compulsory to have. So um, and normally um, uh, um, a family doctor will uh, direct it to a specialist in case it's needed. You can't go directly to a hospital for any first questions that you're having, especially so going to a family doctor. Um, mm -hmm. and, and if you've been directed then it's covered normally. But all those kind of questions, best to ask your, your, your insurance company for that. But I think that for me, it's uh, smarter to just get an insurance there because Switzerland is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to know, like, I just have to organize this by myself or do I get some support from you uh, guys? You can also, we can, if you send us an email, we can send you the, uh, the details from, like, for example, AON. Um, and then you, can, then you can make your own insurance uh, through AUN. I think that's the most easy way to do that. Okay. So private insurance, which is also for liability as well, and you can extend it and you can um, uh, cancel it by month. So that's that's really nice because normally if you have like a basic health insurance, it's only for a year and you can't cancel it during the year. So mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, just send us otherwise an email. We can give you all the details about that. Okay, so AON, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
and then we can answer the uh, the questions uh, in the chat. And uh, if anyone is still wants to raise their hands, this is still available. So please do so. All right. Um, regarding housing, the next topic. Um, here's a quick overview of okay, how is it going to be um, for regarding uh, the housing as from September. Um, if you're outside the EU and starting an online program per September 2020, um, in a, more in general, it can be a specific case, but in general, there will be no housing available at Saxion because you will start the online program uh, from your home country. We do encourage you to do so. Um, if you're outside the uh, uh, EU Schengen, um, starting the on-site program per September 2020, and you did pay the package fee in time, including the housing housing fee, um, you are and you are also allowed to travel to the Netherlands, then there is, of course, a room reserved for you, and you will also receive confirmations about this, um, and you are very welcome to, yeah, to visit us, and uh, we will make sure um, the room is available for you in the mid of August, and the exact dates, uh, that this will be also be informed uh, to you by email. If you're inside uh, the EU, so you're a European student starting the on-site program, um, you needed to make a reservation. Um, the deadline was the 7th of July. Um, some of you might already have received a confirmation about uh, the reservation request. Um, so each and every reservation that you have made uh, will be honored. If you are inside um, the European Union and starting an online program for September 2020, uh, you are still very welcome to also uh, enjoy and uh, get the housing from Saxion. But we can also understand if you want to cancel your reservation um, due to the fact that you wish to follow the online program uh, from your home country or that you cannot travel to the Netherlands, for example. Um, because also some uh, countries within the European Union are not allowed to travel to the Netherlands. Then make sure you go to our frequently asked questions um, because we can arrange a full refund for you and the steps are also mentioned in these frequently asked questions. And also make sure that you just notify us due to your cancellation um, via our email address at international office at saxion.nl. So this is in general what we are going to arrange for you guys. Um, detailed and specific uh, other questions can also be asked of course uh, via email. Uh, but you will also receive more in-depth information through email, like a confirmation uh, from our housing department. Are there any questions, for example, uh, due to, okay, is my housing arranged uh, or anything else that we can make, uh, make sure gets being answered at this moment? I'm just checking the chat at this moment. If I can see any questions related to housing. Um, uh, Melissa, sir, yes, it is. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Hello. I wanted to ask you, I'm from Oman. I went back to Oman when the pandemic started, and you know it's uh, my contract at Saxion uh, in the housing in the Heights will end at the beginning of uh, August. So mm -hmm. I contacted the international office to extend my rental for two. Uh, they told me I can extend my rent for two weeks. Uh, how can I apply for it? Because they haven't uh, replied that to me. Um, okay, so you did make a prolongation uh, request, so to extend your housing contract. I don't know what do you mean, but I, I did uh, email them and told them, but uh, no one uh, contacted me to, uh, and told me what to do. Mm, okay, well, there is, uh, there, there was the opportunity to prolong uh, your housing. 
Um, but I think it's wiser because you are a, a current student of Saxion and not an upcoming a new student to uh, email us th this question again. So um, we can check this with this housing department because we know that our housing department is currently working hard on finding solutions for extending housing contracts. Uh, but this information I cannot give you at this moment uh, by, by mind and by head. So we need to do check this. So please uh, send the email to international office at saxion.nl. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We do have some time left. Maybe it's a good idea to uh, change the topic at this moment to our last topic. And then the questions that you still have, just drop them in the chat or raise your hand. And I will give the microphone to my colleague. So. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Mihai. I'm also working for the international office, but I, I also just graduated from Saxion. So if you have any questions related to your student life, also to your budget or how you deal with the transportation or uh, free time activities or student jobs, please uh, let me know. Uh, send a message in the um, in the chat, or you can also raise your hand, and we can have a conversation about that. I'm uh, currently also okay. Farid's make present. Hello, Farid. Do you hear me? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm from non EU students, and I, I took a short degree program that only one year. So, so the question is Is there possible that I have a part time job for only one year in in, in Netherlands? So, so you are not a non EU student, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. So it it will be possible to to have a part time uh, job as a non EU student, but uh, you only are allowed to have a limited number of hours. Uh, I think you can work a maximum of sixteen hours per month, if I'm correct. Oh, I see. Um, it's sixteen hours a week. Oh, a week, sorry. Yeah, oh, you okay. have a residence permit for that, and you need to change your insurance uh, as well. And so the money that you earn, I, you can you can consider it extra pocket money, but it will not be uh, that much, unfortunately, as a non-European student. All right, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Um, what kind of jobs are they? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear your question. The connection was really bad. What kind of student jobs are there in the Netherlands for non-European um, students? Well, uh, for example, I had um, colleagues from Vietnam that, uh, for example, in my class that used to work in uh, restaurants in uh, in the city where we were living. Uh, but there are all kinds of jobs. I also had colleagues who used to work in hotels, then um, uh, some other uh, colleagues also worked for the university, so that there are there are different options. I, I don't know if you were able to. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Ernest. What is your yeah. question? Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, okay. I just wanted to ask, what is the Dutch government's um, what is the Dutch government saying concerning international students? For instance, I'm from Nigeria. Obviously, I'm not part of the list that they released. So, what is the stance? Because I'm confused about because I obviously have friends in other universities and I'm hearing different things. So I just want to know what is the Dutch government? Um, what are, they, what are they saying concerning international students generally? Are they saying they can't come? Are they saying the the, the decision is, is is left to the universities or what is the stance? So uh, if I if I if I understand correctly, you are asking what is the position of the gov the Dutch government yes, towards international? Yes, yes. yes. Well, um, to to be honest, uh, I I think this is also like. Um, based on international regulation and also how how the coronavirus is evolving you know okay. so i i cannot give you uh, the right answer uh, to this question okay. but um i mean as as long as the corona situation is still uncertain then also the the student situation is uncertain so i i can i cannot give you the the right answer for that so so, so what I'm understanding is that the Dutch government is saying currently, as long the since the corona situation is still not sure, all these national students are not coming. That's what basically what you're saying. Well, uh, th there are some countries from which you can actually come to the Netherlands, but okay. uh, you you can ch you can check that on the website uh, Netherlands and I. Okay, what I'm asking is because. Um, Apart from the mail, you guys, you guys sent me a mail asking about okay applications and housing. That was initial. I was like, why am I being sent a mail about applications and housing when most of the courses are going to be online? That was one. And two, I one or two other websites. I'm not. Sure. I saw so. I think I, I even sent a. I did like a screen grab of the website and I sent it to your international office. I still haven't gotten a reply yet. But on that website, which is a very popular website for anything like applying to EU, all those things, the website says that. Um, Generally, people are not allowed. Most countries are banned, but they have some exceptions for um, like skilled people. Not skilled, for, well, they have some. The government has some exceptions for skilled people, emergency services, or things that are basically uh, vital, like services or vital people that are tied to vital services are allowed or something like that. And the, on the list, they also said students. So I was, I was like, okay, fine. Does that mean so? Because I'm confused. If you go to the foreign ministry's website. You see something similar like that, that they are saying that they are only allowed, they, that they will, most people are banned, but some people will be allowed. So I just want to clear what is the clear from the Dutch government, because I've got the website and I'm not really sure I can understand what the website is saying, but from what I've, from the questions I've been asking, is there a, an exception for students or the university just wants to take the extra precaution because based on the the schools, the buildings you have, you can't maintain that social distancing. You know, I don't know. Sorry, my question is long. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I understand. But um, yeah. uh, I don't have an I, issue I, with not coming. I just want to know what is the what is the government saying? It also depending how many uh, which embassies are open. So they have given us a list of the countries that are have uh, opened their embassies. So that that's a okay. view of the. Non-European countries um, have the option uh, still to do an on-site program uh, to come this way. Oh. But it's, it's yeah. you know it can always change. Uh, we're also every day we're also checking the same website. I guess I think I think we Netherlands and you. Um, okay. We keep an update about that. So a lot of embassies oh. are still closed, and therefore we just have a few countries yeah. that. Uh, according to the European government, uh, it's, they can still travel. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I guess. Okay. Um. I guess. I guess. Um. Okay. No problem. I'll I'll check the websites and the Dutch Foreign Ministry website and see if there's any information I can <coughs> glean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Okay, I, I think um, we are at the end of the session. So, uh, are there any questions in the chat that has been not answered yet, or? And I still see no question about the housing at this moment for more about the dormitory abstraction, I guess. And there's a question about the session, uh, it's been recorded and how are we going to offer this later on. I know there's a place that we're going to leave this uh, recording, right? I'm, I'm not sure where actually. Does anyone know that? Well, I I think we first need to discuss this also within our team, how it's going to work. Okay. Yeah. So maybe later on, if it's been placed, then they we probably will let them know through the website, I guess. Yeah, or we will just post some parts of the video on YouTube, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah. At the well, okay. That's it then for this morning live Q and A session. I would like to thank everybody for your questions. Uh, it was the first for us to do so, so please uh, do be kind. Uh, and we, do, uh, yeah, we do love to see you guys uh, at the beginning, even online or on-site. Um, it was very helpful for us to do this as well, so we know what's been, uh, yeah, what's been on your heads at this moment, uh, what's the questions you do have. Um, please do also do check the uh, frequently asked questions on our own website. Um, and if you do still have questions, it's okay to just email us the questions at the international office at suction.nl. And hereby, thank you again. And let's hope we see each other soon. And also, it's, it's, there will be another session in the afternoon. So if you still have questions, you may join that. Uh, uh, session and we will try to answer your questions. Uh, the session will be at 4 p.m. the Central European time. So we we are wait we are you are most welcome to join us again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye bye. <laughs>